Good morning and welcome back to our daily devotions looking at one of the Psalms. Uh, if you've been with us for a while, um, you might have noticed that these videos tend to go up and down a little bit uh, in terms of how long they are. And sometimes that matches up with the Psalms. Grab your Bible, open it to where we're up to today, Psalm 107, and just see, just flick backwards and forwards. We are in the middle of some very long Psalms at the moment. Um, this will culminate in Psalm 119, which is the longest psalm. Very, very long. Um, and some, for some of these videos, we're not going to be reading the psalms out. Um, but for some of them, it's well worth doing. And even though um, our psalm today is 43 verses long, I think it's worth us taking the time to read it out and just to, to slow down and to dwell on the words God is speaking to us. It means I'm going to say less about the psalm afterwards, but I think it's worth really hearing this. So I'm going to pray and then read out Psalm 107 for us. Lord, let us see beautiful things in your word this morning that lead us into a deeper relationship with you. To the glory of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Psalm 107 goes like this. Oh, I'll give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So that he bowed their hearts down with hard labour. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and burst their bonds apart. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he shatters the doors of bronze, and cuts in two the bars of iron. Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord and his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and they staggered like, like what? They reeled and they staggered like drunken men and were at their wits end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love for his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns river into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. And there he lets the hungry dwell, 
and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields, plant vineyards, and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing they multiply greatly, and he does not let their livestock diminish. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, evil, sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But he raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness shuts its mouth. Whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. Let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Quite a long psalm. Uh, You may have been listening or reading along and just going, what on earth is this about? Or why does it have to be so long? It kind of just kept repeating itself. Did you notice those repeated words? Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. We see give thanks to the Lord in verse 1. That steadfast love in verse 1. We see crying to the Lord in trouble and distress. That's in verse 6. We're thanking again in verse 8. Wondrous works, children of man. What else are we doing? We're crying to the Lord again in verse 13. And we're being delivered in verse 13. And then in 15, we're again thanking the Lord for his steadfast love and for his wondrous works to the children of man. Verse 19, we're crying to the Lord in trouble and the Lord is delivering them from their distress. The response then, verse 21, thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works for the children of man. And also let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving. Verse 28, we're crying to the Lord in trouble and yet the Lord is once again delivering people from distress. And so we respond, verse 31, thanking the Lord for his steadfast love for his wondrous works to the children of man. And then we finish as we begin, thanking the Lord, considering, thinking on, remembering his steadfast love to his people. I don't know how we feel about God. (laughs) I don't know how we feel about ourselves and I don't know how we feel about the situation um, we currently find ourselves in. Maybe things are better for you than they were a few weeks ago. Maybe they're worse. Maybe you feel more free or maybe, strangely, you feel even more isolated. That's all okay. 2020 has been one big year of trouble, hasn't it? Everything seems to be turned on its head. Things that we held sure and solid maybe don't seem that way anymore. But God is still the same God he was in 2019, in the year zero. God is still the same God as he was at creation. And God is still the same God he will be for eternity. And we should find great comfort in that. No matter what the world looks like, God is sovereign. He is over all things. And even if we find it hard to look around and realise, God is still in control. Nothing happens without his say-so. We need to remember God's steadfast love to us, seen most clearly in Jesus and his great sacrifice. Because we too, it's not just the Israelites who get stuck in times of trouble and distress. We too get um, down. We too um, struggle in times of distress. We too uh, need God's steadfast love and his redemptive wondrous works to us, the children of man. We need that through the coronavirus. We need that through the protests, uh, through the riots. We need that in our own sin. And we need that most clearly to be taken away by Jesus on the cross. So no matter the trouble that we're going through, remember God's steadfast love seen most clearly in Jesus. And if you're a Christian this morning, remember that Jesus has taken away all your darkness, all, all, all your guilt, all your sin. And he carried it himself on the cross. And so our response, we can call out to him in times of trouble, remembering what he's already done for us in Jesus, and what he's promised to do for us in the future. We can call out like the people here in our trouble, knowing that God has already delivered us from our ultimate distress and our ultimate darkness. And we can respond in praise and in thanksgiving, 
remembering God's steadfast love. That's not always easy. That is our prayer for you as youth leaders, that you remember the steadfast, the ongoing, the continued and eternal and everlasting love of God that he has for his people. If you're a Christian who believes and trusts in Jesus, that means you. And that is wonderful news and truly something to give thanks for. Let me do that now, um, partly because we've reached the end of the video and partly because my Mac is on 7% and is going to die soon. But let me pray thanks to our great God. Join me as we pray. Lord, we want to thank you for your steadfast love. We want to thank you for your wondrous works. We want to thank you for who you are and we praise your name this morning, Lord. We praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Sovereign over everything, the whole world, the King of the cosmos, the Saviour of our souls. Lord, help us to remember that when it's hard. Help us to remember that and when we're feeling low and when life looks difficult, when we're struggling. Help us to remember that you want us to cry out to you in our troubles. You are a God who cares, who listens, who hears our prayers, as we've heard so often through these psalm videos. And Lord, we're praying for you now for, for whatever situation we're in. We are lifting that up to you in this few seconds of silence and asking you to deal with it and to, to let us know something of your comfort and peace as we lift up our problems to you. Lord, into your hands we give these things. Help us not to worry, but to trust in you and your steadfast love. For Jesus' name and for his glory we pray. Amen. Amen. I've tried to keep this video a little shorter um, today. Um, do read back over Psalm 107 as you go out. And remember, no matter the difficulties, there is still so much we can thank God for, not least his steadfast love for us, his people. Amen. See you soon.